We don't always have situations where we only have two variables changing. Um, sometimes we have three. Um, pressure, volume, and temperature. What if they're all allowed to, to vary? Here we're keeping the amount of gas constant and the temperature has to be in kelvins. We can combine Boyle's law and Charles law and we get what's known as the combined gas law right there. We can use this in the same way that we use Boyle's law and Charles law and we've just got more numbers. So a sample of gas has an initial volume of 158 milliliters at a pressure of 735 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. If the gas is compressed to a volume of 108 milliliters and heated to a temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, what is its final pressure in millimeters of mercury? Blah, right? Make a table, pick out the numbers, and identify them. Okay, so we make a table. Yeah, yeah. You have to choose a pen first. That's what you have to do. Make a table. So we've got one and two. First number I come to 158 milliliters. Well, that's a volume, so I'm going to label that column V for volume. Next is 735 millimeters of mercury. That's pressure, so I'll call that column pressure. Temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. Is that a good unit for the temperature? No, it needs to be in Kelvin. So 34 plus 273 is 307. 307 Kelvin. If the gas is compressed, so that's indicating that something's changing. We have another volume, 108 milliliters, and a temperature of 85 degrees Celsius. Convert that to Kelvin, 85 plus 273, 358. What is the final pressure? Okay, so we've got this blank here. We're going to call that P2. We've got pressure, volume, and temperature. We need the equation that has all three of those letters. So P1, V1, over T1 equals P2, V2, over T2. So many letters and numbers. There are fractions there. Get rid of the fractions. Cross multiply. So P1 V1 times T2 equals T1 times P2 V2. I've taken the top of this side and multiplied it by the bottom of that side. So I take these, multiplied, are equal to the bottom of the other side times the top of the second side. So P1 V1 times T2 is equal to T1 times P2 V2. Now I can rearrange this for the thing I'm trying to solve for, which is P2. So uh, to get P2 by itself, I need to divide by the things that are next to it. I need to divide by T1 and divide by V2. I have to do the same thing to both sides. So P2 is equal to P1, V1, T2 over T1, V2. You really have to be careful with those. So I want P1. So I go to my table and I find P1 is 735 millimeters of mercury. Always write the units in there. And next I need V1, 
V1 is 158 milliliters. And next I need T2. Uh, that's T1, tempting, but I need T2, 358 Kelvin. All of this divided by, now I'm going to use T1, 307 Kelvin, and volume 2, 108 milliliters. It is a long process, but the individual steps are not that hard. Looking at the units, I've got milliliters canceling milliliters, kelvins canceling kelvins. That's a good sign. Now the math. So on your calculator, you're going to take uh, 735 times 158 times 358. So do that, 735 times 158 times 358. And then what most students want to do is they want to divide by 307 times 108. That's fine, but you have to use parentheses. Okay, so you have to put parentheses around those if you're going to multiply. So divided by parentheses 307 times 108, close the parentheses. Do this on your calculator. Make sure you're going to get the same answer. Um, my answer should have three sig figs. I'm getting 1253.9. The unit there would be millimeters for mercury. The other way you can do this is 735 times 158 times 358 divided by 307 divided by 108. Calculator mistakes are very common here. So, what's the final pressure in millimeters of mercury? Well, it's 1250 millimeters of mercury, or 1.25 times 10 to the third. Any questions? Do another one. A balloon has a volume of 3.7 liters at a pressure of 1.1 atmospheres, a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. If the balloon is submerged in water to a depth where the pressure is 4.7 atmospheres and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, what will its volume be? Assume that any pressure, that any changes in pressure caused by the skin of the balloon are negligible. Same strategy. Make a table, find the numbers, and put them in the table. First, first number, 3.7 liters. That's a volume. Label that column volume. 3.7 liters at 1.1 atmospheres. That's a pressure. And... 30 degrees Celsius. Change that to Kelvin. 273 plus 30 is 303 Kelvin. It's submerged. So there's the changing word. Pressure is 4.7 atmospheres. So 4.7 atmospheres. Put that in the pressure column. Temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. So 15 plus 273 is 288. What will the volume be? So our question is, what's V2? P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Cross multiply, P1, V1, T2 equals T1, P2, V2. I want V2. 
So I'm going to take this side, divide by T1, P1, sorry, T1, P2. Do the same thing to the other side. you got to write this stuff down. It's just way too complicated to keep in your head. V2, then, is equal to P1, B1, T2, over T1, P2. So now I go find these numbers. Uh, P1, 1.1 atmospheres. Volume 1, 3.7 liters. Temperature 2, 288 Kelvin. Down in the bottom, temperature 1, 303 Kelvin. And pressure 2, 4.7 atmospheres. The atmospheres cancel, the Kelvins cancel. So I have 1.1 times 3.7 times 288 divided by the quantity, open parentheses, 303 plus 4, not plus, times, times 4.7, close the parentheses, press enter. Um, a lot of these numbers have two decimal places, I mean, two sig figs. So my answer is going to have two sig figs. So I'm going to write down two sig figs plus two more. The unit is liters. So 0.82 liters is my answer. Does the answer make sense? We took a balloon and we increased the pressure on it. What's that going to do to the volume? Make it smaller? Make it smaller. And we decreased the temperature. We made it colder. That's also going to decrease the volume. So the volume better be smaller. And it is. 0.82 versus 3.7. Any questions?